Alright guys, this video is on Theorem 3. Now Theorem 3 is about similarity. So let's just quickly recap what we should know from Grade 9. What does similarity mean? Well similarity means two things. Similarity means that your shapes are equiangular. Now what does that mean? It means that whatever shape you have, every angle in the one shape has an equal partner in the other shape. Now, equiangular makes you think that all the angles are equal, and that's not true. Not all the angles are equal. Each shape has an equal partner in the shape that it's similar to. Now, we'll see this in practice very shortly, but just note that it doesn't mean that all three angles are equal. Now, similarity also means something else. Well, in addition, your shapes have to be equiangular and your sides have to be in proportion. So if I tell you the two, any shapes, are similar, you can assume that they're equiangular and the sides are in proportion. And technically, if you're trying to prove that shapes are similar, you have to prove that they're equiangular and their sides are in proportion. So it's kind of two things that you have to show. Now, let's just quickly remind ourselves of, this, of the symbols. Three vertical lines mean similar. So if triangle ABC is similar to triangle PQR would be vertical lines, then you can tell a number of things. First of all, you can tell they're equiangular. So angle A will be equal to, now here's the catch with similarity and with congruency, you have to write the letters in the right order. So A will be equal to angle P, if you've got the order right, which you have to. So angle A must be equal to angle P. Angle B must be equal to angle Q. And angle C must be equal to angle R. So the order is very important for you to write out your triangles. Now this means that they're equiangular because every angle in the one triangle has an equal partner in the other triangle. They're not all equal, but every angle has an equal partner. Now secondly, all your ratios are equal because the sides are in proportion. Now what sides can you compare? Well again, if you've got the order right, it's very easy. So AB compared to BC... AB compared to BC, would have to be exactly the same thing as, who's in the same position as AB? PQ, because they're the first two letters in the other triangle. And the same position as BC is QR. So if these triangles are similar, those two ratios will be equal. Now I can pick any ratio. So I could have picked AC, and that would have be in the same position as PR. So I could have compared AC to AB, and that must be equal to PR to PQ. Or I could have compared BC to AC, and that must be exactly the same thing as QR to PR. So if you get your order right, you can tell everything just from the naming of the triangle, which is why it's so important. Okay, so that means we're ready to move on. So theorem 3. Now notice theorem 3 has an asterisk next to it, which means that it, this proof is examinable. So again, I would watch this entire proof from start to finish, and then I'd go back and prove it with pausing, etc. Now, I think I'm going to go into two slides to prove this, this theorem. So you're going to need to watch and see how much space you'll need, because it does take quite a lot of space. So it says, if two triangles are equiangular, now equiangular means each angle has an equal partner. Now that's one step into proving similarity. You'd also have to prove the sides are in proportion if you're trying to prove similarity. But this theorem says, if the triangles are equiangular, then the sides have to be in proportion. So you can't be equiangular and not have proportional sides in triangles. It's kind of a two-in-one special. If it's equiangular, the sides must be in proportion. Now, as soon as you have both of those, it means your triangles are similar. Now you've kind of seen this before, because in grade 9, the only way we were taught to prove that triangles are similar is angle, 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 which is what this theorem is saying. This theorem is saying, if you can prove angle, 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 so three angles equal, you know their triangle is similar. Now you only know the triangles are similar, because equiangular triangles means that the sides must be in proportion. So let's have a look what you're given. You're given triangle ABC and triangle PQR, two triangles. Now you're told they're equiangular. So angle A is equal to angle P, angle B equals angle Q, and angle C equals angle R. So they're equiangular, which is labeled in our triangle. 
What are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that this means the sides are in proportion because then they'd be similar. So we're trying to prove, let's look at our ratios, AB and PQ are the same position and BC and QR are the same position. And AC is the same position as PR. So I, can, I need to try and prove any one of those ratios. So I'm going to choose PQ compared to AB is equal to QR compared to BC. Now let's have a look what's happened here. Up until now, every single time I made a ratio, I took two sides in one triangle. So for example, I would have compared blue to green in one triangle and said it must be equal to blue to green in another triangle. Now I've changed it around here simply because this is the way the theorem says it. You don't have to compare sides in one triangle. You could compare blue in one to blue in another and green in one to green in another or yellow in one to yellow in another. So you can compare one triangle side to another triangle side but you have to compare the equivalent side so the sides in the same position. So notice here I've compared PQ to AB because they're the blue sides in each triangle and then I've compared QR to BC because they're the green sides. So you can choose to compare sides within a triangle or compare the same side between triangles. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to show. I'm trying to show my sides are in proportion. And I'm going to add on a third one there, which is the yellow two. So I'm comparing blue, green, and yellow, and they should all be equal. Okay, so let's have a look at what the proof is. First of all, I'm going to make a construction. I'm going to construct M and N. I'm going to draw a line between them. And I'm going to label one of the angles M1 because I'm going to need to use it. So let me write down my construction. I'm going to construct M and N. Now, not any M and N. I'm going to construct it such that that distance from P to N is exactly the same distance from A to C. So basically, I'm fitting in the top triangle into my bottom triangle. And PM is the same distance as from A to B. So I literally have recreated the top triangle within the other triangle. So I construct M and N such that PN is AC and PM is AB. Now let's have a look at this proof. In triangle PMN, which is the triangle at the top in the bottom picture, and triangle ABC which is a triangle at the top. Angle P equals angle A. Now that was given to us. We were told that angle P and angle A were the same thing. AB equals PM. Well, that's because I constructed it like that. And PN equals AC. And that again was because I simply constructed it like that. Now what does this mean? I'm basically just trying to show you that these two triangles are identical. They're congruent. So ABC at the top is exactly the same thing as PMN, literally because I constructed it that way. And um, if I was proving con congruency as I was here, don't forget the three um, horizontal lines, and my reason is side, angle, side, because I have two sides and the included angle. Now, angle M1 and angle B are exactly the same thing because my triangles are congruent, they're identical. So those two are equal. But, Angle B was given equal to angle Q. They originally told me that my top triangle and my bottom triangle were equiangular. So angle B and angle Q are the same thing. But this means that M1 must be the same thing as Q. So because M1 is the same as B, but B is the same as Q, it means that M1 and B and M1 and Q are the same thing. Now that's perfect, because this means my two lines are parallel. As soon as you have, these are corresponding angles equal. So I'm going to write corresponding angles equal. As soon as you have a set of corresponding angles equal, the lines that they must be on must be parallel. Now why did I want to prove this? Well, theorem 1 says that a line parallel to the second line in a triangle will divide the two sides proportionately, which is what I'm trying to prove here. So as soon as I have parallel lines, 
I can compare any ratio here. So for example, AQ, I could have PM, so that would be exactly the same thing as PR compared to PN. So therefore, PQ compared to PM, blue compared to yellow, must be exactly the same thing as blue compared to yellow because I have a line parallel to one side of triangle. Sorry for my squiggle there. Um, but um, these two triangles were congruent. My top triangle and this PMN are identical. So instead of writing PM, can't I write AB because they're the same length? So can't I go PQ compared to AB? And can't I write PR compared to AC? Because these are identical triangles. And so I've just written there in brackets. Why? Because PM and AB are equal. I, I constructed them like that. And PN and AC are equal because I constructed it like that. Now I'm going to carry on to the next page simply because I ran out of space. But you can obviously carry on, on the same page. Now what are we saying? We're not going to redo this. But what we're saying is instead of constructing the points on PQ and PR, can't I construct the two points on the other side? Then what you can do is you can do exactly the same idea. You can make D and E such that you've got congruent triangles, which is exactly what I did last time. And therefore, I can do exactly the same ratios here. I can do PQ compared to AB is exactly the same thing as BC compared to QR. Sorry, QR compared to BC. So this is a slightly confusing bit because we're not going to write out the whole thing again. But basically what we could do is construct exactly the same triangle but in the other corner. And then we could prove the exact same ratios just on the equivalent side. So we could do this simply again but with the other corner if that makes sense. Now in geometry, we don't rewrite this entire thing because it would take us forever. We've already proved it once. We would simply do the same thing again. Which means, I've just said that PQ compared to AB is the same as QR compared to BC, which is the same as PR compared to AC, which is what I was trying to prove. And this means that they're similar because you have equiangular and you have the triangles in proportion, which is cool. So what's my reason for similarity? They're equiangular and my sides in proportion. Now this is quite a, these theorems are not easy to prove, but unfortunately this one is examinable. So try and watch it, go to your teacher, grapple with it. It is actually a fairly simple proof. It just takes a while for your mind to get around to it. Now whenever you're using this theorem, Basically what this theorem says is if you can prove angle, 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 the triangles are similar, which is what we have been doing since grade 9. So the only difference is now we've proved the proof. That's it. How we're going to use this in reality is exactly how we use this in grade 9. So let's have a look at, this is actually a grade 9 question. It says in the figure AC equals CE and AB is parallel to DE. Prove that triangle ABC is similar to EDC. Now I find it very useful to look at the names they've given me. They've given me ABC and EDC which means that A and E must be equal because that's the order in which they gave it to me. B and D must be equal and C must be equal. Now that kind of helps me what I'm trying to show is equal. So my question is how can I show that? Well, let's do our grade 9 style proof. We have to say in triangle ABC and EDC, number 1. Well, angle A must be equal to angle E. The question is, do I know why? Now I do. I have parallel lines. So these are the Z shape. So alternate angles and AB is parallel to DE. Don't forget you must label, you must name the lines that are parallel. Number 2, angle B is equal to angle D. That's the same reason. Alternate angles AB parallel to DE. Now, your grade 9 teacher might have told you that at this point, if you have two angles that are equal to each other in a triangle, the third angle has to be equal. Because you can't have two of the same angles, if they're adding to 180 or 3, the third angles have to be equal. So to be honest, you don't have to prove angle, angle, angle. You just have to prove angle, angle. The third must be equal by default. Now, generally in a proof, 
we generally go, we generally have to say that the third angle is equal, and often we can just say because it's the third angle of a triangle, so you don't actually have to be able to prove it. In this case, I can. I know that angle C and angle C, although I can't call them angle C and angle C, I'd have to call them ACB, which is that guy, and DCE, which is that guy. You'd actually, you can't call them angle C because that, that would be ambiguous. Now, it's very easy to say why they're equal. They're vertically opposite angles. But I easily could have written there third angle of triangle because once you have two angles equal, the third must be equal. Now, theorem 3 says, if you can prove angle, 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 the sides must be in proportion, even though you can't show it, and therefore the triangles must be similar. So I can go straight to the fact that they're similar. ABC is similar to EDC. My reason? Angle, angle, angle. So the idea behind theorem 3 is you don't have to show equiangular and sides in proportion. The one implies the other must be true. Now, if you have a look at the bottom, this is where ratios are going to go. Similarity means that my ratios are equal. So often they like you to show certain ratios, and they often don't write them as fractions. So have a look at what it said here. It says, hence show that AB times DC equals BC times ED. What? Well, let's have a look. Where's AB? AB are the first two letters. And have a look where ED is. ED are the first two letters. So AB is the same side, well, the side in the same position as ED. So there we go. And DC is in the same position as BC. So remember, when you create ratios, you can compare any two sides within one triangle, or you can compare one side to its equivalent side in the other triangle. So for example here, I'm going to compare AB. Now I can compare AB to BC, or I could compare AB to its partner in the second triangle, which is ED. Now I've chosen to work within one triangle, so I could compare AB to BC. Now what must that be equal to? It must be equal to the same comparison in the other triangle, which is ED compared to DC. Now why are those equal? Because my triangles are similar. So you have to write down the reason is because triangle ABC is similar to EDC. Now that's not how they wrote it. They used those four sides, but they wrote it in one line without fractions. So what did they do here? They've basically multiplied by the denominator. So they multiplied by BC. So then BC cancelled, and I got AB is ED over DC, and now I have BC at the top. And then what they did is multiplied by DC on both sides. So DC cancelled, and therefore I have my one line. So you've just got to get used to playing around with ratios. Yes, the original form is a fraction form, but you can multiply it by the denominators, which rearranges the format. Now that's the end of theorem 3. Um, again, quite a tricky theorem to prove. Please grapple with it. Ask your teacher to help you. But actually, using it, we've been doing since grade 9. Uh, we've just got to get used to this idea of the ratios that come from the similarity.